Welcome to my presentation on glaucoma. I am Abraham Sir, a fellowship trained glaucoma specialist practicing in San Luis Obispo, California. The purpose of this presentation is to provide a clear and concise overview of glaucoma. I will discuss what glaucoma is and the treatment goals and options. Glaucoma is a group of eye diseases which damages the optic nerve and if not managed properly, often leads to irreversible vision loss. The optic nerve is located at the back of the eye. The optic nerve transmits visual information from the eye to the brain. When damaged, it can lead to vision loss or blindness. While other conditions may also affect the optic nerve, glaucoma causes a distinct pattern of damage, which will be illustrated on the next slide. The normal optic nerve, when viewed from inside the eye, resembles a round structure like a donut or a bagel, something with a thick rim and a small central hole. The rim is made up of retinal nerve fiber layer, which are long, thin cells that transmit visual information. In glaucoma, the optic nerve rim becomes progressively thinner. The term cupping is commonly used to describe the appearance of a nerve with glaucoma. The cup is the hole of the donut. More important, though, is to monitor the rim for progressive thinning. The rim is the dough in our donut analogy. This thinning is like losing wires in a cable, weakening the visual signal to the brain. Glaucoma damages the optic nerve, which can lead to vision loss. This image shows a visual field test result from someone with advanced glaucoma. In this visual field test, patients click a button when they see a white light on a white background, similar to a hearing test but for vision. The intensity of the light stimulus are adjusted to a person's visual threshold. The crosshair in the center represents preserved central vision, while the dark arcs indicate areas of peripheral vision loss requiring a brighter light in order to be detected. This is an example of how glaucoma usually affects someone's peripheral vision before it alters the central or straight ahead vision. Optical coherence tomography of the retinal nerve fiber layer is a key tool for evaluating glaucoma. OCT provides high resolution images to measure RNFL thickness and detecting changes in thinning before vision loss occurs. This early detection is critical as RNFL thinning indicates cell loss, a hallmark of glaucoma progression. By monitoring RNFL changes over time, we can assess disease severity, guide treatment, and prevent further vision loss. In this example, there are two squares aligned vertically on the left and right side of the page and a table located in the center top and an XY graph in the center bottom. The top left box shows the right eye's optic nerve with a sliver of dark gray representing the rim or the dough in the donut and a light gray cup. The rim is extremely thin, indicating advanced glaucoma damage. The top right box shows the left eye's optic nerve. It has a thinner rim or dark gray portion compared to a normal optic nerve and is also less severe than the opposite eye. This asymmetry in optic nerve thinning between eyes is a common feature in glaucoma. This image is the bottom half of the previous slide's OCT printout. It shows four circles at the center and bottom, representing retinal nerve fiber layer thickness in quadrants, or the top circles, and wedges, the bottom circles. The top and bottom quadrant of the left circle, which is the right eye, are thinner than the top and bottom quadrant of the right circle, or the left eye, indicating greater optic nerve tissue loss in the right eye. In asymmetric glaucoma, the worst eye often shows an afferent pupillary defect, or APD, where the pupil dilates to light instead of constricting to light. Testing pupil responses helps distinguish physiologic from pathologic asymmetric cupping. Periodic OCT scans are essential to monitor glaucoma stability or progression. While OCT printouts contain additional data, we'll move on for brevity. Optical coherence tomography, OCT, of the macula shown in the colored squares at the top left, which is the right eye, and the top right, which is the left eye, measures the ganglion cell inner plexiform uh, GCIPL thickness. 
the red circle and green circle with a yellow wedge indicate thinner and healthier ganglion cell inner plexiform layers respectively, reflecting glaucoma damage in the eye with the thinner measurements. The macula is a high value area which is used for vision needed for reading, seeing fine detail, seeing loved ones, and driving. Ganglion cell inner plexiform layer thinning here signals potential central vision loss. Periodic OCT scans track ganglion cell inner plexiform layer changes to assess glaucoma severity, monitor progression, and guide treatment. Unfortunately, many insurance companies do not reimburse physicians for obtaining and interpreting this vital test. Evaluating someone for glaucoma requires a comprehensive eye exam. Nearly every part of the eye exam could provide clues if someone has glaucoma or is at risk for developing glaucoma. The specific eye exam findings are too numerous to discuss in this presentation. Some of the exam findings are extremely subtle and can be easily missed if not specifically looked for. An initial exam for glaucoma should always include central corneal thickness, or CCT, and gonioscopy. Central corneal thickness measurements helps understand an additional risk factor for having glaucoma and is sometimes used in interpreting intraocular pressure. Gonioscopy assesses the anterior chamber angle to determine open angle or angle closure glaucoma, which guides treatment decisions. Discussing open and angle closure glaucoma is a launch point for discussing how glaucoma is classified. Glaucoma classifications are beyond the scope of this presentation. In summary, the eye exam combined with the optic nerve scans and visual field tests are incorporated to make an accurate assessment for glaucoma and helps determine the effective management. Intraocular pressure, or IOP, refers to the fluid pressure inside the eye, which is necessary for maintaining the eye shape and supporting its optical functions. Elevated IOP is widely recognized as the primary modifiable risk factor for the development and progression of glaucoma. Understanding and controlling IOP is central to glaucoma management because it directly influences the health of the optic nerve and can prevent or slow vision deterioration. High or elevated IOP exerts mechanical stress on the optic nerve head, leading to structural damage and functional vision loss over time. While not all cases of a glaucoma involve elevated IOP, the majority do, and the higher the eye pressure, the greater the risk of optic nerve damage. Maintaining IOP within a healthy range is crucial to avoid vision loss and to preserve long-term eye health. Uncontrolled IOP remains a major driver of glaucoma worsening, so treatment strategies prioritize its reduction regardless of the glaucoma subtype. IOP fluctuates throughout the day and is influenced by factors like posture, time of day, medications, and this makes 24-hour monitoring valuable for personalized management plans. The cornerstone of glaucoma therapy is reducing IOP to halt or slow optic nerve damage, as no other treatments directly reverse the condition. This is achieved through various methods, including laser therapy, a procedure called selective laser trabeculoplasty, enhances fluid drainage and reduces intraocular pressure, medication, prescription eye drops or oral medication, decrease fluid production or improve drainage to reduce intraocular pressure. Surgery. There are multiple surgical options to lower intraocular pressure when other treatments fail. Low pressure goggles, often, refer, often referred to as negative pressure goggles or ocular pressure adjusting pump, OPAP, systems represent an innovative, non-invasive approach to managing intraocular pressure in patients with normal tension glaucoma. Unlike traditional treatments, these devices, approved by the FDA in 2024, apply controlled negative pressure or a vacuum around the eyes to mechanically reduce intraocular pressure. This therapy is particularly targeted at nighttime use when IOP naturally peaks. Regular eye exams are critical for detecting glaucoma, assessing treatment effectiveness, and adjusting interventions. Glaucoma often progresses without symptoms until significant vision loss occurs, making ongoing surveillance essential. Maintaining stable intraocular pressure preserves quality of life and reduces the need for invasive treatments. 
as the primary modifiable factor in preventing optic nerve damage, intraocular pressure is pivotal in glaucoma management. However, IOP measurements must be interpreted alongside optic nerve function, visual field tests, the patient's age, and other ocular or systemic conditions to ensure personalized care. For accurate and detailed information on glaucoma, visit the American Glaucoma Society at americanglaucomasociety.net or the American Academy of Ophthalmology at aao.org. Research studies are available on PubMed, pubmed.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. For personalized advice, consult a fellowship-trained glaucoma specialist. Use the Find a Glaucoma Doctor tool on the AGS website to locate one near you.